I wish I could dance like that. Like what? Don't you know the grizzly bear? <laughs> the grizzly bear. As if you do. Certainly I do. Miss O'Brien, shall we show them? Not likely. <laughs> William, give us a tune. Come on, Daisy. Go on. <laughs> Hands up. <laughs> Put your joints out. See to the range and go to bed. Thank you, that was beautiful. <laughs> what did I tell you? She's found her Romeo. I might be her brother. She hasn't got a brother, I would know it by now. Just a sister and living since hands. You know everything, don't you? Everything, my foot. You're hiding behind him, but he's not what you think he is. Oh, go on, William. If you're going to be such a spoil spark. All right, I will. Come back, she didn't mean it. <laughs> Good night, Mrs Hughes. Good night, Mrs Hughes. I was right when I said she was looking sparkly-eyed. I beg your pardon, Thomas. He can disapprove all he likes. Mrs Hughes has got a fancy man. Him? A fancy man? Don't be so nasty, Daisy. It doesn't suit you. I reckon there's a job vacancy coming up. Miss O'Brien, do you fancy a promotion? Oh, very droll. If she's got a boyfriend, I'm a giraffe. Leave me alone, Mr. Bates. I know you mean well, but let me be. What chance did he have up against a champion? Now you listen, you filthy little rat. If you don't lay off, I will punch your shining teeth through the back of your skull. Is this supposed to frighten me, Mr. Bates? Because if it is, it isn't working. I'm sorry, but it's just not working. You play. Where are they all? I'm busy, I suppose. Haven't you got anything to do? Yes, I have. Of course, I have. You mustn't let Thomas get you down. He's just jealous. Everyone likes you better than him. Not everyone. Then she's a foolish girl and she doesn't deserve you. Though why am I encouraging you? Forget all that, for 10 years at least. You're a kind woman, Mrs Hughes. I don't know how this house would run without you. I don't, truly. Stop flanneling and get on, before I betray you to Mr Carson. Clumsy clodhopper. Sorry. 
You will be sorry when I finish you. Look at this. Leave him alone. Anna, Lady Sybil's back from Rip and she's gone up to her room. Thank you. Why does she waste her precious time on politics? Here, here. Oh, don't you believe in rights for women, Thomas? What's it to you? Well, I know you don't believe in rights of property. I think some people might find that interesting. Who's going to tell them? You? I'm sorry. The only sure way to get rid of a servant is to have him or her suspected of stealing. And you forget we've tried that and it didn't work. But last time we invented a theft. What we need to do is to make him a suspect when something's really been stolen. How do we know anything's been stolen? Because you stole it, you noodle. Oh, you mean the wine? Yeah, the wine. But that's the whole point. Bates knows I took it. He was threatening to tell Mr Carson. Well, he can't, can he? Not if we get him first. I've seen Mr Bates with a bottle from time to time. I must have thought he was helping you. Why would I order a valet to help with the wine? Well, when you put it like that, of course you wouldn't. So, Mr Bates is taking wine. And why would this be? To drink it? It's not to clean his boots. Thank you, Thomas. Daisy, Thomas says you have something to add to this. Well... You're not in any trouble or any danger of trouble. You remember what you saw? I may have seen him coming out of the cellar. May. Did you or didn't you? It's very hard for the girl, Mr Carson. You're frightening her. I'm sorry. Thank you. You may go. I wish you'd tell me what's troubling you. If it's this business with Mr Beats. Oh, it's not that. I'll get to the bottom of that. Well, I hope you'll do it soon. There's one thing I hate, it's an atmosphere. And we've got a real atmosphere going now. It's an unfair rumour which needs to be scotched. It's very hard to hear the names of people you love dragged in the mud. You feel so powerless. Well, I respect Mr Bates, but I'm not sure that I love him. I wasn't thinking of Mr Bates. Mr Carson, have you got a minute? What is it, Daisy? Mr Carson's a very busy man. I know he is, but I think he'll want to hear this. I told you something that wasn't true. Why would you do that? I did it as a favour for a friend. But I know now he was wrong to ask it of me. That poor wee babe. How's her ladyship doing? I'll take her up a tree in a minute, but I dare say she won't touch a bite. What about you, Miss O'Brien? What about me? Well, it must have been quite a shock. But yes, yes it was. I think you'd better dine with us, Mr Branson. We can't know if you might be needed later. Well, I'm to go for the doctor at ten. What a long-faced lot. Kindly show some respect. Come on, Mr Carson, she'll get over it. They're no bigger than a hamster at that stage. Will you shut up? I agree. What is the matter with you, Thomas? I don't know. I suppose all this makes me feel claustrophobic. I mean, I'm sorry, of course I am. But why must we live through them? They're just our employers, they're not our flesh and blood. Thomas, don't be so unkind. Is there nothing left on earth? that you respect. Look at him. Blimey, if he carries on like this for the unborn baby of a woman who scarcely knows his name, no wonder he fell to pieces when his old mum snuffed it. William! Thomas! William! Stop that! That is enough! <laughs> Come down! 